Yo, EJ, and this beat is too chill, dude. I'm trying to keep these to like five minutes, but I could zone out for a lot longer on this. Anyway, so there'd be examples. You ready? This is, this is that moment we've been talking about, right? I'm gonna start using Derby. So what I want you to do is clone this repo, you know, like you usually do, whatever it might be. Once you have it downloaded, you know, you have these files, like we'll just real quick go over, there's a bunch of examples. So there's some chart stuff that has some D3. We'll go over that in another video. Uh, the chat, I think is a good canonical, you know, collaboration in real time. Uh, we're gonna start with that. It's a little bit more complicated than some of the simpler ones, but you know, it's got all the pieces you might want. So it's a good intro. Uh, and there's a few more uh, that you're welcome to poke around. I'll show you, you know, we'll go over uh, running this and um, how to, to look at each example so uh, yeah that's what we'll do we'll start with the chat we'll look at um, you know what what makes up a derby project and we'll get it running we'll, we'll change it a little bit um, should be fun so once you've downloaded it then you might go into your terminal you need to npm install inside the derby examples I've already done that it takes a while blah 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 um, so then we want to run the chat example. So let's look at what it is in there. It's got a server.coffee that we're going to run. So this example is using CoffeeScript. I know you've already uh, played with CoffeeScript a good bit, so um, it's cool. Some of them are in JavaScript. Uh, you can use either um, right out the box. So we're going to run coffee chat server.coffee. That's going to kick off the server at localhost port 3000 so we're gonna go over there and use your favorite text editor of choice right now I'm using sublime with a vim plugin open up the chat all oh, right so you know here I'm gonna be me I'm gonna say what's up and then I can actually open this in a new incognito window let's say paste this here and I can pretend to be you and now we're talking in real time um, so put that over here let's look at what's going on all right so we have the chat folder we have our server.coffee which has only one line in it actually which is requiring derby starter so remember derby starter is a kind of packaged up server stuff for you. So you really just use this in a project and you can have a Derby server running. Um, you do have to have Mongo installed and you don't have to have Redis, but you might as well. It's easy enough on the Mac, just brew install uh, MongoDB, brew install Redis. Uh, I'll make another video going over the details of that in case. Um, you know you run into any issues there it's good to just kind of see it but for now you know all we have to do is run it um, and it's working all right so what is this doing it's including the uh, index.coffee of this directory that's what the dir name is it's built into node right um, so that's just saying like this directory that it's running from um, and so in this index.coffee we're creating an app and this is very similar to what you might do with express right like app equals you know require express except here we're requiring derby dot create app we're giving it a name uh, we're giving it this file as, as what it's going to require from this is just kind of stuff derby does to load up uh, the other pieces like styles and views and components which we'll go into more detail in, in later videos but for now you know here it's loading views loading some styles from these directories you can see actually in this directory example when it loads um, the views it loads it from the views directory so you can include more views here and um, you know so that's just something to be aware of you don't have to put everything in one view file and just so you see what what's in a view file you know we can specify the main HTML for the page and the body like these body head and title are all special things that Derby will use to render up here uh, the title or 
you know, in the head we can have some meta or, or other things. And then, of course, the actual content of the page. So, by default, you have app, an app, right? We've we've loaded the, the views of styles. Here's a couple of components. We'll get into using and making components a little later. For now, just you know, they're basically node modules that can also be browserified, so it's shipped to the browser that do various things, um, or you know, package up some functionality. So like this connection alert. I'm gonna go ahead and stop the server, and then here in a couple of seconds, it should give me a connection alert that uh, we're disconnected from the server. Or at least it should. Anyway, live demos never work, right? Oh, there you go. It's got some kind of timeout. So it's going to start flashing that. Oh, and of course I kicked the server back on, so it went away. Anyway, it does work. Um, we'll go into to some more exciting components later too. Uh, the other main thing, you know, when we're getting into this uh, express type stuff, right, um, you can do routes just like express. So you app.get. Uh, we're going to take in the room name. So actually if I go to like cool room or whatever, right? This is a new place. And then if I want to, you know, if I say something here, then I don't see it in this room, but if I go to cool room here, I see the message and say, you know. So, you know, you can, can take in variables in the routes. And there's a few important pieces you want to know about. The page, the model, um, let's see. Yeah, let's talk about those two things. So, a page is what it sounds like, right? Like one page, though. If you go to another um, route, this loaded another page, you know, but it's hitting the same. Sorry, if, if we hit the route, we give it a different variable, right? It's going to hit this logic again, and it's going to figure out all the messages um, for that room and then render them. And the render happens here, page.render. So, yeah, all right. Let's talk about the model a little bit because you know what's that's what's letting us do um, the syncing between uh, the two browser sessions. It's going through the server. When you use the model, you can basically let's see here. Oh, we don't do that in the examples. Nope. All right. I can do this. You say window.model equals model. This is when the app loads the model um, in the browser. So let me save this. That's going to restart the server for me. So now I should be able to. Oh, I didn't like that. I think I can do it down in the create. So here's another thing I'll, I'll talk more about. We can then set up functions on the app and init is what init and create are two things that have special functionality like init will be called when the app is loaded both on the server and in the client. Remember Derby renders both server and client. Uh, create though is only called on the client so window should exist. I think it didn't like it when I put it up here because I forgot that that code probably gets run on the server too. I think that's what this is saying. Yeah, Windows not defined. So let's try this. Yeah, so this time, yeah, we can interact with the model interactively. Uh, wow. So if we look at the code, in the main room, it says model.set page.room to room, right? And so we're getting room out of uh, the query parameters, I believe. So let's see what page.room is, it's lobby, right? But if we go open a new tab and say cool room, let's see what this one says. Okay. Oh, we can do the path as well. So it's cool room. 
So that's how we can store data and we can access it, you know, uh, interactively here or programmatically here. Um, if we look at the HTML, there should be We have a different uh, debug thing for, for templates. Um, I think it's in a slightly newer version, so I'll have to make sure that's included in the examples. But for now, you know what? We're still cruising. Um, let's just look at the template a little bit to see how that data matters too, right? So probably somewhere in here, there's page dot is room not rendered. Now we just do the, the messages and the name. So let's find some more data, right? So we subscribe to the messages. So let's also look at that. This should be messages. And so this is a collection. So this is slightly different than the page, which is just an object that's available. Um, you know, page will be different for the different sessions. Um, but the collection, if you're subscribed to the same collection, they should be the same. So when I go over here and I say model.get messages, I should see the same thing. Two items, they have the same ID that you can see the comment is, is right there. But if I say uh, new message, so creatively, then I do another model.get. Here I see three items. There's the new message. If I go back here, I do model that get and of course third message matches so that's all you know kept in track so now you know if you are queried to message you're subscribed to a message query anytime someone adds a message uh, which is probably done somewhere down here add um, you can do model that add and you can give it a uh, the collection and then a, a, a JSON object right and you see the room the user ID the comment Right, so all these things um, are available here, and then in the template, this lets us look at rendering something, right? So here we render the users um, as a session ID. So oh, there's a picture class, so I guess that's how it's determining these avatars. Um, let's see, messages. So we count the messages. Where do we loop over the messages? The page that list. And there's a chat message view. So let's see what page that list looks like. So you know this is oh it's, it makes it an array so we can loop over them probably. And it's just the messages again. Um, but yeah, this is how I kind of do it, right? I look at the code, I see what's in the template and then I go and, and check out to make sure the data is there and then we can see how this is rendered in this chat message right there's uh, we're showing the time uh, we're showing the name of the user we look it up by the message's user ID right that's how we're showing each of those and then we just show the comment um, and the time here is a timestamp but there's this function format time right so that lets us introduce few functions which you can add to app.proto, so app.proto is like a special thing that, that acts like a prototype. Uh, it's basically saying like make these things available uh, to the templates. Um, yeah, so that that kind of covers a lot of, of the basics. Of, there's styles and we're using stylus here, so it's just another uh, you know style processor. And uh, I think in order to use that, you use Derby Stylus, which is another node plugin, so you npm install that, right? So you can take a look at the package JSON to see what was installed. These are all the things for all the examples, they all share it, you don't have to use all of them, of course. But um, yeah, so that's the chat example. Um, take a look at, like the sync has everything, it has components, we'll go over that in the, another video. And um, you know, charts D3, that's definitely another video coming up. All right, so hope you enjoyed. Chill out, man. This is a really chill beat. Thanks again for that. All right.